back in Romans, Michael? Well, yeah, back in Romans. It's 10th sermon that we'll be looking at here in a little bit. I'm loving it. And, and we've been talking a lot about Abraham. And we'll get into this a little bit, but Pastor Joe was saying that Abraham just had a, he had to trust in these big promises. But I was thinking, not only did he have to trust in them, he had to wait a long time. He, yeah, it was like he was 100 and Sarah was 90. Yeah. Yeah. And this is not the same thing, but I was planning on recording today <laughs> at 2.45. I don't know if you promised, so I don't want to hold you to that. Yeah, yeah. And let's, can we look at the clock and get a time check? It is 4.25. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But you're a busy guy taking care of yeah, your family. Hey, yeah. no shade. Yeah. So, man, <laughs> so the next time you say, when do we want to record? And I say 2.45 or 3 on a Sunday, just say, so I'll see you around 4. That, that's true, because I want to share just some behind the scenes <laughs> for for the audience. Um, uh, we, we know, hey, we're going to record. What what time uh, you thinking, Michael? <laughs> Michael throws out this 2.45, 3-ish, if that works for you. Yeah. Next text I get from Michael. <laughs> Still heading home, probably around 3.30. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, not the only text. Another one <laughs> saying, ah, I feel like it's been a bait and switch all day, but now I'm headed your way. Yeah. Should hit you close to four, right. maybe just a little after. Yeah, and and I'm here. Hey, but the thing is, you said you would be here, and you are here. And I am here. I, I, it was yeah, a good yeah. test in faith, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were actually not very far from here. <laughs> Did you ever eat at the Viva? I love it. It's yeah, so good. It's I pretty like good. Viva. Jill's yeah. like, I always feel like I'm getting... Like my my body's getting fed with like real whole it's, foods and stuff. It's it's and I, my brother lives in Peru. Not to totally derail this. Yeah, and that's that's like how they do chicken in Peru. It's all just the time. it's pretty. It's, they like uh, sell it like by the rotisserie kind of in Peru, but it's like just street food kind of. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, so it's kind of authentic. It's authentic. true to true to the food. Yeah, yeah, that's true good. to the food. Yeah, so yeah, we were there. It took us longer there. We get back. I'm helping get the kids away. You know, we're, I'm trying to help. You know, I got a new computer. The editing going great. Like, Love it. tell it's a lot faster than my old one. And at first, no video glitches. I thought, well, maybe it's because, of, you know, I'm just going to force an update. So then that took much longer because it was like this huge Windows mm -hmm. thing. So, hey, but we're here now we're here. to look at Romans. <laughs> so buckle up because we are going to take it to the next level. From the hearts of the low country in South Carolina. It's the Take Two Podcast, where we take theology to the next level. All right, Hope Against Hope is the title of today's sermon. And um, it's really weird. I don't know. I, I hate asking this question. Oh, boy. Um, well, I guess I will. I guess we're here. But, I mean, Jill's like, man, that was a really good worship service. I don't know. If you felt that way that or if you, like if you got yeah. moved or anything, I don't know. It's great. <laughs> no, no, and I, and I, I said that yeah. deadpan, but yeah, I, yeah. it was okay. great. It was okay. great. Well, because it's weird to me because I don't like, I, you know, when I'm picking out songs for a worship service, um, you know, certain themes kind of show up mm. a lot and I don't know what it was. Like I was picking out songs and it's like, where, what do I personally oh, need yeah. this week? And I was like, I just feel like. You know, we need to focus on the glory of God, the glory of God, the mm. glory of God, the glory of God, the glory of God. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know. Every single Everything. song was about the glory of God. And then Joel gets up and he was like, did you look ahead <laughs> at the passage? I was like, nope. 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 <laughs> uh, but apparently, you know, we're going to see Abraham in this having faith in God and, uh, and glorifying him because of a kept promise. Yeah. Even though it may have taken a while. They take a while, but God <laughs> is good to keep his promises. And I like I like Pastor Joel on the front end kind of framed the sermon this way that God makes really big promises. Mm -hmm. And and some of these we read are hard to believe, spend a lot of time developing that. But Abraham believes in the, these big promises, and that's that's great as we'll see this passage unfold yep. and develop a little more. Yep. Yep. Uh so the context we last sermon, you know, we talked about Abraham and David, mm. two big patriarchs of the Old Testament faith, and how Paul starts to prove this, because he's ended chapter 3 saying, hey, you're not going to earn it. Now righteousness has been revealed from God that is from faith, and starts chapter 4 saying, here, I'm going to show it to you. Look at Abraham. He was counted as um, justified before being circumcised. Mm. 
David in his Psalm 32 says that blessed is the man who's forgiven, who God credits mm. his righteousness, yeah. not earning it. And so today we're kind of just kind of keep on, you know, Paul's going to continue to unpack this. We look in uh, chapter four, verses 13 through 25. Yeah, great. And it, 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 I think I say this every time, but it amazes me just, I mean, Paul's really developing this thought. He's really just hit, making his point over and over to where, it's not like, well, he said this, but did he really mean it? It's like over and over and over and over again, where it's really hard to not get justification by faith alone reading this, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, so maybe we'll just read uh, real quickly this first section. Paul is going to contrast or contrast laws and works versus grace and faith. So this is verse 13. For the promise to Abraham or to his descendants that he would be heir of the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise is nullified. For the law brings about wrath, but where there is no law, there is also no violation. For this reason, it is by faith in order that it may be in accordance with grace so that the promise will be guaranteed to all the descendants not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, which is both circumcised and uncircumcised, who is the father of us all, as it is written, a father of many nations. I made you in the presence of him who he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. So really kind of recapping what we learned about last week. And then he basically says, if this came about through... The law, one, it can't be by faith because we see Paul just driving a wedge between the two of those. can't be by grace. Mm -hmm. And second, if it were, we would all be in a really rough place because <laughs> we, we would not be able to keep it because mm. it brings about wrath. Wow. Yeah, no, no that, that, that is good. Um, Pastor Joel kind of highlights those, those two verses, 15 and 16, that the law brings about wrath. Where there is no law, there is no violation. For this reason, it is by faith in order that it may be in accordance with grace. So it's guaranteed to all descendants. It's, it's pretty, pretty clear at this mm -hmm. point that you don't want to go through the law. It's not through the law. If it was right. through the law, problem city. Right, right. And then uh, Joel, as he often does, kind of gives application right in the middle if, if he feels like it's there. Um, and he reiterates Paul's developing a proof, and he does this illustration with Ethan Hughes, which I was like, I would have been down with the illustration. <laughs> right, come on, come uh, on faster. <laughs> um, but uh, he asked Ethan, you know, hey, I got $20. You can earn it one of two ways. Either run around the building 10 times in 30 seconds. Do you think you could get around the building one time in 30 seconds? <sighs> it'd, be, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be tough. It yeah, would I don't be know. Tough. I don't know. You would yeah. be moving. Moving, yeah. That's a better word. It will, and, the, and we should point it out. Ethan, a little slow to get that money. <laughs> I know. Get up there, man. No, Take that I 20. Well, I guess well, we didn't we didn't say that. Yeah, yeah, side. yeah. So the second option was, or I can just extend this offer to you and you can come forward by faith and accept it through my grace. And at that point, <laughs> I'd be just, jumping up there. Give I me was that like, 20. go, Ethan, go. <laughs> but then he, then he finally went up and got it. And so, you know, obviously uh, the court, the picture is the same with us. Like there's no way we're going to earn salvation uh, but we can take the free gift. Uh, and he also related this song, Amazing Grace. I've, now, I've heard of this. It's, you've heard, heard I this think. song? Yeah, How's it yeah. go? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I t once told Tim, this was maybe eight years ago, right when I first okay. started leading, because he was talking about Amazing Grace. He's like, because I'm a lyrics guy. Like, the lyrics mm. have to mean something to me. Obviously, you want the music to uh, what, be. Are you are you about the down Amazing Grace right here? Is that what's going to happen? Oh, ho, ho, ho. well, we'll, we'll listen because I, I was like, I don't know that I can. I don't. I don't know because that second verse, "Twas grace that taught my heart to fear." It wasn't grace; it was God's wrath. It wasn't His grace. Mm. And he was like, "No, Michael, you're misunderstanding this verse. It was God's grace that opened your eyes to His wow. wrath and helped you see that you were a sinner." And it was by grace that your heart was taught to fear. I was like, okay, I'm on board. I can sing it now. I just have to, you know, make those things work. But yeah, uh, Joel talks about, you know, it was grace that taught my heart to fear, and really, that is looking at the law. Mm. 
when we look at the law and where we fall short over and over and over again, man, we should be afraid. But the other side of this, it was grace that my fears relieved because yeah. he paid the debt for us. Yeah. Oh, man, what a... <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad he came around, Michael. <laughs> I didn't, would hate for you to have to walk out. We sing that. You're like, I can't. Well, you know, I can't do it. There, you know, there are beloved songs that we don't sing a lot at CBC because, yeah, that the words not, aren't there. They're not there. Like, yeah, maybe we should. That'd be that would be a good episode to explore in detail because I think music, and I'm not a music guy, is challenging because in some sense there's some. You can't take everything literally. So there's some of that, and then how much do you get into that? and Or how much do you say, well, this was from some not-so-great writer, but the lyrics are good, but their theology's off, and there's a lot yeah. to think through that, oh, yeah. that might be good that's one a, day. That's a can of worms, because there are yeah. people that have very yeah. oh. strong thoughts on on music in general, but yeah. yeah. Man, maybe maybe teasing that so for my, a future yeah, episode, yeah. yeah. I'll give you one example. My father's favorite yeah. hymn growing up was In the Garden, you know, uh, I walk in the garden alone. That one. Mm. And you look at the, the lyrics there, there's just not a lot of substance right. to them. Just because it's a hymn doesn't make <laughs> yeah. it solid. Yeah, right, Don't right. let it fool you. Right, yeah. right. All right. Uh, details of Abraham's faith. We see this uh, detailed in 18 through 25. And I don't know that we need to read all this, but there mm. are some things that Joel really uh, pointed out. Um, what we see you know, this recounting of what happened back in Genesis, what was 17? that? 17? 18? 18. 18. 18. 18. Oh, yeah. And while we have recorded an episode already, it's, it hasn't hit yet. But I, I would just True. let you know that if you thought this was the angel of the Lord, not that I would ever have thought this, but it's not the angel of the Lord that visits Abraham here. It's just the Lord with two other angels with him. But, uh, yeah, that's a tease for a there future episode as well. Hang but in there. <laughs> yeah, so that that'll be that'll be hitting soon. But so the Lord comes and visits Abraham. We see that in Genesis, and Sarah laughs, mm. and Joel's like, "It's kind of is laughable." Yeah, I'm, I'm glad he like he spent you know five minutes on this because I think I think it's because it's easy to be like, "Come on, Sarah, let's yeah. get it together." But he right. pointed out everyone was laughing. Right, Abraham was laughing in the earlier part. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it is like. Are you serious? Um, so, but yeah, Lord was serious. 190 conceived, yeah. go through nine months of pregnancy. Man. Can you be, can you imagine being 90 and, and no. having a baby? I mean, I, I, no, no <laughs> out in the no, desert. No, oh uh, man, that, that is, that's like the definition of, of laughable. Yeah. So, you know, but, but God answers the promise. And so, um, so in, I think it's verse 20, it starts out with this conjunction. And, you know, Joel likes these conjunctions yet or but with respect to the promise of God, Abraham did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in the faith. And here's one of those key verses that tied into our worship service, giving glory to God and being fully assured that, that what God had promised, he was able to perform. And then that was credited to him as righteousness. Now that, that that's good kind of pulling those two different aspects apart. Maybe let's look at that first one that he didn't waver in unbelief. This is, I like, I like the whole title of the sermon is hope against hope. It's mm -hmm. like, does not mm -hmm. look like this can happen, but he didn't waver. But someone might say, I, I grew up in church. I've read Genesis. <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of wavering. It seems. Yeah. Well, they come up with this alternate plan with Hagar. Um, and they have Ishmael and he was like, he was like, I believe you God, but, I don't know how you're going to do this. And, but, you know, in the end, he believed him. And then I, I don't know that uh, this is pointed out in Romans, but to, believed him to the point where he offers up Isaac and Hebrews would point out believing that God could bring yeah. him back from the dead. And yeah, yeah, for you to think, I'm actually going, Isaac's going to die, but mm -hmm. I believe even if that happens, that, mm -hmm. I mean, that that's very strong faith. And uh, Pastor Joel is, one of his commentaries is by Doug Moo that kind of helps paint a good picture mm -hmm. that, you know, it doesn't mean that Abraham never wavered momentarily or had these hesitations, but it wasn't this deep-seated and permanent attitude of distrust and inconsistency in his relationship to God and his promises. And I, I think that's a good way because we mentioned this last time, you know, you hold up, hold up Abraham, you don't want to hold him up as this guy who was perfect, that 
we can't relate to. It's this right. perfect example. Great man, followed mm-hmm. God, but like all of us, had some missteps, some yeah. significant ones. Yeah, 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 he did. Um, and then he, like we already talked about, he highlights this idea of giving glory to God and, and then ask some of these practical questions about how do we do that? Um, That's a great question. Like if you just had to think think mm-hmm. that through, it's we hear all these buzzwords, mm-hmm. we know this is important, but how do you connect mm-hmm. the dots? How do we lean into this a little mm-hmm. bit? Yeah, so he starts out, he has a number of these. The first one is to pray in this morning in our Sunday school, we actually just devoted to prayer. And so that's good. Yeah. I, Are I you gonna say something? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I will, we'll pass over that. No, uh, not good. And then um, the second one was get to know God, the object of our faith. And I think this is critical. I think it was Tozer that said something like, you know, what you believe about God tells a lot about who you are. Oh, yeah. Um, good. Uh, there's it's probably more to that, and some of our listeners probably know it better than yeah, he uses. Whether. Like, a, what word does he use? He says the most, not precocious. Per he uses a big word. Yeah, the most important thing about yourself, mm. but he doesn't say important. Yeah, I'll I'll think about it. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of cycle back around. <laughs> all right, all right. And uh, so, you know, I think this is so good because I, you know, there's these two big categories of what we see the word doing about giving glory to God and one are his character, but really God is so transcendent that he has to let us know his character through what he does. So it's like who he is and what he does. And so we see at least from his actions, some of the big pictures of, of our Bible are his creation. We look at the creation. We're in awe. you know, Psalm 19, uh, is one of those you know big Old Testament ones. Romans one, we see Paul talking about creation. Psalm one hundred four, we read there today. You know, read that. It's a good psalm about his creation, how he holds everything together. And then the other thing is his saving nature. So in the Old Testament, it was saving the Hebrews um, out of Egypt. And that's repeated time Over, and time man. again, you know, by my strong right arm, you know, I delivered you, you're my people. Um, and then you might get like Psalm, uh, I think it's 36, where you have like, uh, for his mercy endures forever. It's either 36 ah. or 136. But it kind of goes through all of these things like King Bashan, King Og, and how he delivers them. And just so his saving acts. And of course, those are all pictures of what Jesus is going to do on the cross in the new Testament, not just saving us from these earthly things, but saving us from our sins. So we look at God's, you know, who he is, the character he is. And, and we, some of that's revealed to us by him telling us, but then some of it's revealed to what he's done and we can glorify God. Yeah. That's great that there's not just one way to look at these, but God's given us all these different pictures and you know, it's, not a bad exercise just to look back in your own life and just see how God has worked. And it's like you said, there's no, you know, quote unquote, good Jew who grew up in, you know, went to Jewish school that would not know these great acts oh, yeah. of God because you read scripture and it's just like, man, they're just recounting these things over mm-hmm. and over and over hundreds and hundreds of years later. It's mm-hmm. just built into their DNA. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then I, I'll get off a little, this will be like yeah. a little off script. This will be a little take two ish during the middle of the, of this application. But the, you know, something I see, like if you read first Corinthians 10, 11, 12, 13, Paul's talking about spiritual gifts and he's talking about how they work together as a body and how I'm gifted slightly mm-hmm. different than how Zach's gifted, but we're both elders. We're both speaking. We're both, kind of leading we're both in that role but there's people you know in the pews who to get up and do announcements to get up to sing like they would just be like no we I can't do that but God has supernaturally gifted them to do other things <clears throat> and so you know by us all of us doing our part if I were to quote Belichick you know do your job oh no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if we all do our jobs that that the spirit has supernaturally gifted yeah. us to do, we're going to glorify God. You know, we're going to bring about the common good of other believers, and we're going to bring glory to Him as we work as this organ, organization organism. Not all of us doing the same thing, yeah. just doing different parts and kind of blending in. Because my gaps, someone's going to oh, fill he's, in. He's got some gaps. <laughs> I've got gaps. No, we we yeah. all have gaps and so many different 
burdens or desires and see needs in such different ways. It's amazing to see how God just puts his people together Mm -hmm. and complements each other. And, you know, if you're not stepping up in your role, then, then your church might, your local body might have a gap there that, that really needs to be filled. So that's a, that's a great thing to consider. How can I be used? Hopefully you are. Mm -hmm. And if you're not talk to, talk to your leadership. That's a good thing to figure out. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. All right, so how do we deal, um, how do we develop our faith? One, pray. Two, get to know God. Three, learn God's promises. Uh, there's a lot of promises in the Word of God. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you could get you gotta lost. Gotta be careful yeah. because not all of them are to us, right? Uh, yeah. So common. so uh, there's this guy that I listen to every now and then. Ooh, <laughs> I have a feeling we know this guy. But he had like a worksheet. I, I, maybe I could find her. I think actually oh, yeah. it was his brother. His brother's oh. a pastor in Florida. Oh, okay. Um, had a worksheet that would basically say, if you found a promise, you know, like, what's the context? Who's it to? What's actually being, being guaranteed? So we don't like start claiming promises that were never meant for us or we're taking them out of context and stuff. But um, there are a lot of promises in, in the word. We want to read those, understand what God has promised for us. That can help increase our faith. Not focusing on our circumstances. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He did. He, Pastor Joel went on like a three minute whisper. Yeah, we yeah. were all like leaning in, like, tell, <laughs> tell me more. Yeah. But uh, not focusing on our circumstances because, I mean, you're going to be paying attention to your circumstances right, yeah. if they've gone bad, but that can't be your anchor or your like anchor. what you're, yeah, yeah, what's just, just dictating mm-hmm. right. your decisions in your life. Right. You've got to be looking uh, anchored above and then um, hanging out with good people like me and Zach, uh, people of, <laughs> of faith who are going to encourage you, stimulate you, pick you up when you're down, mm-hmm. bring you back down when you are too up, you know, got a big ego. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll... My, Michael brings me down often. <laughs> he, he's, he's there. Someone's got to, but, but I, what I like about these applications is that they're all so practical and none of them I would say are, like, oh, I've never thought of these before, but I don't think we take time just to break it down. Mm-hmm. If you're going through a challenging time or you want to develop your faith, like go through this, think about it, maybe jot down some promises. Mm-hmm. It, it's just that meditation and thinking about these things that that does help mm-hmm. grow and develop our faith. Yeah, and, uh, and to that end, Joel gave some examples of you know, times, circumstances that might be challenging. And yeah. James, who's only been at our church for a little while, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> had mentioned that, um, you know, in his previous church, he was a deacon. And really, he was called to do and did things that were just a little bit outside of his comfort zone as a deacon, a little bit mm-hmm. on the more introverted side, but had to step up, make calls, greet people. And that can be a, a, an act of faith, stepping out um for that. Yeah, that, that, that's good. And even to tie on to, you know, figuring out your gifting, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that everything you do is going to be totally comfortable. That'd right. be a mistake to be like, well, my gifting is not serving because I don't like to serve or right, something. You know right, what I mean? Right, like, right. that's not the right way necessarily to think about it. That's you true. Know? That's true. And then, so I was sitting there in the pews and I was thinking about, you know, he was talking about maybe thinking about times when you've been wronged. Uh oh. And, like this. Uh, you know, I, I think about, uh, something we've mentioned here more than once, but I've been doing better. Like even Jill's like, Oh, you did, you did great ah, this nice. game. Um, but yeah. So, you know, seeing some bad, you know, not just bad calls, like egregious, egregiously bad calls and going, you know what? God's I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave room for God's, uh, you know, wow. righteousness is I'll tell you what, I, Michael's faith must be monumental because we've had a lot of run. It's like sports season, faith grows. School's out, it kind of wanes a little bit. The refs are just really yeah. bringing you to Christ. Yeah, That's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had, oh man, we had one ref that called the girl safe before she ever got home. And Lydia clearly had the tag on her. Okay, yeah. And like his arms are doing this. I'm like, right, she's, she's not even home. All right, yeah, gotta get Faith up. is growing, yeah. love it. And then referencing, you know, Hebrews 12, yeah. just knowing we have a cloud of witnesses. Jesus is our example. We are to strive. You know, we haven't strived to the point of shedding blood, but, you know, the discipline helps us as we're going through this. Not all discipline's fun. Yeah. But yeah. at the end, it produces that uh, um, peaceful fruit of righteousness. No, I think I think all of that is, is, is good and um, really helps us. Yeah, you read through the Hall of Faith preceding Hebrews 12. It's like, man, yeah. God has been good to leave us 
with with all these examples and then like you were saying other people in your in your church mm-hmm. body your friends that are in christ that that can help you through these things um and then joel gives several mm-hmm. questions to to think about it didn't necessarily uh develop these you know yeah. but but good things to talk about and i think this first one he was trying to get across the whole time and it's I think it's a challenging thing because it is so mm-hmm. just not, it's not trite, but it can become trite mm-hmm. because we hear it every single day. But do you marvel at the way of justification that it is by grace through faith? Um, praise God that it's not through work because you would be up a creek. Yeah. And we hear that every Sunday. Our church does such a great job of proclaiming these great gospel truths, but it's easy to kind mm-hmm. of be like, well, that's how it is. Like I've heard this for, you know, 30 years, you know, whatever, but that's a good thing to marvel at and to really think about what a big deal that is. Um, similar vein, question number two, do you rejoice in your justification? Um, it's, it's guaranteed. It's, it's Mm -hmm. that, you know, one time moment where you're declared righteous, but that spans over a lot of time where you make mistakes, right? Yeah. Um, number three, meditate on Abraham's faith. How can you apply that to your life? You know, think about this uh, commentary by by Douglas Moo that talks about he wasn't perfect, but he was not not wavering as a whole. He might have had moments, but he that had a wasn't trajectory, his, trajectory that people could look at and go, "That guy's faithful." Yes, yeah. You look back, not always perfect, <clears throat> but you can see that. Um, are there areas in your life that you can look and say, "I am living by faith"? And then the flip side is, can you identify areas that you need a greater faith? And I like how. You know, Michael's bringing up refs. I think it's good to think practically and not just say, oh, I'll, I'll have faith. But if you can bring it to specific mm-hmm. things in your life, then it's meaningful and it's like on your radar. And you Sometimes can... I, I, we don't suffer huge persecution yeah. and stuff here <laughs> in America. Some. But I think sometimes those big things may be easier because like you've, you've thought about it. Yeah. Then the little small things that just kind of poke away at us during the day that, yeah. you know, here's an opportunity for me to demonstrate Faith, even then, in this, you know, relatively small thing, but that it's irritating to us. No, that that that's good because Michael's oldest is in college, but his youngest is four, so he's got a lot of years of sports. <laughs> yeah. So for him to uh, not connect that, right. you're missing on so much potentially yeah. to grow faith. Where yeah, it's like the everyday. Maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's your job. Maybe mm-hmm. it's this responsibility. But it's like if you can bring this lens to that, that is a literally a life changer over you know, all the hours and the years and, and whatever. And then the last question he has here for consideration is to consider putting down one way you look to develop your faith and tell someone, pray with them about growing in faith. You can encourage others. And just by being intentional about these things, I think you would see your, your faith grow. Yeah, that's great. Uh, while you're reading that first application, it reminded me, and if you're my age from you know, the mid South area. So maybe you are familiar maybe. with this group too. The Martins. Did you ever hear the Martins? Oh, I, I don't know. No? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man. So, uh, you know, they had a kind of a rise. They, they were actually featured on the Gaithers at one point in time. Wow. And then there were some uh, things mm. that broke them apart. We don't have to deal, deal with all those things, but they had this song that, and I, if you got Spotify mm. or if you got YouTube, which it, you probably all do, <laughs> You can go find this called May We Never Forget. And it's kind of along this lines of do we continue to marvel at our at our salvation, at our sanctification, at our mm. justification. And I'll just read like the first verse. It says, the story is so familiar. We've heard it all before. Some days it seems like nothing sacred anymore. Despite the best intentions, somewhere along the road, we've come to take for granted this truth that we know. Wow. And so it's just a song about, you know, just reminding us that, you know, we don't need to forget you know, the greatness of our salvation and what God's given us. Man, that, that is good. It's uh, just something we just don't, don't, I like that word marvel that he mm-hmm. uses. Like, man, we should really marvel at the amazingness, yeah. how amazing that is. Um, what else you got, Michael? I think that's it. I love it. That's our take. Thanks for listening to Take Two. Find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube for those who want to watch our video cast.